Okay. So my project is based on looking at some point location algorithms, uh, specifically on Voronoi diagrams. I was thinking, um, given kind of some nice features of L2 Voronoi diagrams, like the convexity of Voronoi regions, um, is there anything interesting that might happen by doing point locations on it? And so when I was looking around, initially exploring the project idea, um, I was going to do it in Python, and there wasn't any point locations with Voronoi diagrams. I found a library, uh, SciPy, and it had a nice library to compute, compute the convex hull, the Delaunay triangulation, Voronoi diagram, you know, and the furthest site, Voronoi and Delaunay too, but nothing about point location. So uh, my first attempt was this algorithm here it's basically walk around each region or each point or each uh, segment or each edge on the region and then do a left test to determine whether the point lies inside the region or not and then once you've marched around and you found that it lies in a region or it doesn't then the algorithm ends and it was pretty simplistic all i needed was a left test method, um, just needed to convert some vertices into edges from given every region. And then my query function itself was only like 20, 30 lines. So very, very simple to implement. Um, it runs in linear time. And I believe that it runs in, so in class we discussed that left tests are just O1 and so, oh, it doesn't matter or anything. But, I found out in applications, left tests actually do matter. And uh, the number of left tests that were completed, I think actually make, made this poly or made this point location algorithm a lot more, um, a lot faster than the algorithm that I'm going to talk about next. So um, the other, alg or um, one little note I want to make is that in O'Rourke's red book, there is, um, he said, and it was given in an exercise, exercise 7.4.3, that the query time can be improved to log of n, but I wasn't able to come up with an algorithm to do that in time for the project. Um, otherwise, I would have liked to explore that further. So the other algorithm that I wanted to compare that more naive um, simple approach to was the Kirkpatrick point location algorithm that we talked about in class. And so, um, as you can see here, I'm just going to go through a, big, a quick overview of what entailed to actually make the DAG. So I needed to get the independent, get all of the independent sets. And for that, I needed to get an adjacency matrix and find all of the adjacent edges. And then actually computing the DAG, I needed to triangulate all of the independent sets at a given point. I had to make sure that the sacred points were also, you know, sacred and so that they didn't get touched. And um, one thing I found out is that the sacred points in a, um, in a non-triangulation are the sacred points or are the points on the convex hull. Um, and then the DAG class itself, it's pretty lengthy. So I made a test set with just some points and I inputted four extra dummy points. And this is kind of the DAG that you can see that I made manually to double check that the structure itself worked. Um, very, very complicated in terms of a lot of paths. And I think that's what ultimately slowed down the query time of the DAG is because all the left tests even though you're going down a lower or a less amount of height to find the location, it is, there's too many left tests. There's a lot more left tests that have to be completed compared to the naive implementation. And that's kind of like my main findings. Um, that's about five minutes. So I'm out of time. I wish I could have shown a little bit more, but uh, out of respect for time, I want my presentation there. Well, th th thank you very much. Uh, and, and this is interesting and, and, and because actually what you've discovered here is, is a common uh, occurrence in computational geometry. So you, you were comparing sort of a, quote, naive linear time point location to a more sophisticated, you know, logarithmic 
uh, point location query based on Kirkpatrick. And you're confirming the experience that others have had, which is that the constants kill you. <laughs> and that uh, <laughs> before, you know, so the DAG is theoretically, you know, log n versus order n is a huge difference, right? But you've got to have really massive n's before you start to over, overtake the overhead associated with all those extra left tests that, that go into this DAG that you're building. So that's why most people feel that Kirkpatrick is not the most e efficient way to do it. There's a hybrid version that sort of um, works well in practice, uh, especially for what you're trying to do, the point location in a Voronoi. You were marching around every cell of the Voronoi to locate the point, and presumably you had early termination, that as soon as you, you know, a left test failed, you, you marched on to the next phase. Um, what people have found in practice is that point location is something that you, you're usually doing it over and over and over again. I mean, that's why you bother to build a data structure is that you, is you're going to do many of them. So when you do it in a Voronoi diagram, you can click on a point, do the linear time, find where it is. And then the next point you click on, so the first one is P, the next one is Q. What they do is they walk along the segment from P to Q and they only march around the cells that that segment stats. Now in the worst case, that's gonna be linear time. But on average, what tends to happen in practice is that people's queries are sort of clustered. And what they've discovered is that when you do linear, you know, linear time queries and when you walk through a, uh, a, a, a subdivision and do something relatively naive, and there's some very nice clever ways to do it as well that have been discovered, that that works well in practice. So you, you experience that firsthand here in this. Uh, let me pause and ask if there's any other brief question. Anyone has? Okay, then 